Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bible study. Today is February 29th. It is the last day of February. Leap year day. Is that what you call that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> that works. Anything exciting since we last were in the house of God? Hmm. Nothing exciting? Womp womp. <laughs> really? That's how we're rolling today. All right. Can I get somebody to pray us in on today before we get started? Womp womp. I, I can't. Who was that? I can, this is Deb. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. I will pray us in. Please close your eyes and bow your heads. Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. Father, thanking you, blessing you, praising you, Father. Father, thanking you for today. Father, thanking you for keeping us throughout the day, through the week, through the month, through the year, Father, and just for the years that we've been on this earth. You've always walked beside us, Father, and we thank you for that. You've always carried us, God, and we thank you for that, even when we didn't know you were carrying us, God. Father, we ask that you would be in the midst of our Bible study tonight, Father. Father, let each of us um, gain a revelation in, in the way that you would have us to, Father. Father, whatever um, we discuss this evening, that we would each um, take it in and um, process it in the way you would have us to process it and use it in the way you would have us to use it. Father, we look forward to this evening and the things we will learn, Father. Father, we thank you for those that got um, made it to Bible study, and we thank you for getting them there safely. And Father, we thank you for getting them home safely. We love you. We bless you. We praise you. It's in your precious son, Jesus' name I pray. So Amen. usually we talk about um, what we've done to show the world that God is our father and Jesus is our brother. But today I want to go a different route. On last week, we were on Bible study and Rhonda um, taught on last week. How many of us were on last week? Raise our hands. All right. Mm -hmm. I want us to share, those who were on last week, to share one thing that you learned. How did you apply it and what was the result? We had one a lot thing. of great conversations. Mm -hmm. really talked about like the the beams the vertical the horizontal so i won't steal what velda said because that was huge um Come on. she said about the vertical yeah talk about it what i was talking about is with the Mm -hmm. okay, so that's for the horizontal the nope sorry horizontal <laughs> yeah that's, that's the press part. us to the world, yep. the world. Yep. yep okay and so each other uh, if you think about it, sometimes we will have new people, and even some of the older people, that we depend more on what the pastor says, more on what our mm -hmm. brothers and sisters say, than what we do on God. Come on. And what happens is the problem comes top heavy and it begins to fall over mm -hmm. because you're not paying attention to the relationship that you have with God as much as you are with those that are around you, or even mm -hmm. those that are in the world. So, and those of us women know that if you're top heavy, then your back starts to hurt, your neck starts to hurt, and you start to become worn down a lot of times. And I think that that's what we do with our relationship with Christ. We become top heavy because we depend more upon what everybody else is saying. And it goes back to betting the voices whose yeah. voice are betting. Are you betting those of the ones that are around you? Yes, they may be with God, but God has created us all equally to be able to come to this throne and to get the same things that the apostle can get, that the prophet can get, that the evangelist can get, the teacher Good. can get. We all have that ability to do that, but we become top heavy a lot of times because we're so busy trying to get the microwave to work sometimes and we don't want to put in the work. Well, and that's it. We don't want to sit still to hear God's voice and to know that this is what he said. And then after he speaks, you like you all up in my notes, after he <laughs> speaks, what do we do? Are we in 15 different lanes 
Are we half doing what it is what it is that he said for us to do? And we got one foot over here, one foot over there. And then we ask 35 people around us, what do they think about what we think that he said? <laughs> and then we can't figure out why we're not getting the results that we're supposed to get. So if we stop and make that vertical beam wider, stronger, more connected, then we do this beam. Now we can't forget about this one. This beam is important because I'm going to tell you in 2020, I found out how important that horizontal beam was. I was one who could say at any given time, I don't have a problem being by myself. I am so cool with it. I am just fine being alone. I don't need everybody around me because I talk to people all day long. I don't get a break to even just be in my own head for a little bit. Today, I literally went from meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting to meeting. And I still haven't had a chance just to stop and go. Just to think about anything that I've got going on. I've dealt with everybody else's stuff. And so I was happy when that first month, when they said we couldn't go nowhere and couldn't do nothing. I was kicked back watching TV. <laughs> I take a phone call if I felt like it. I mean, it, it was kind of interesting because I mean, I played that thing to the fullest. But then after about a month and a half, I started realizing how I had isolated myself and how I literally gained strength from those around me and the importance of being able to have that connectivity. What were you going to share? I saw you pick that up. You forgot. <laughs> you can't be forgetting that quick. We ain't that old. <laughs> right. <laughs> Amen. Who else would like to share one thing from last week? <laughs> what was that? A <laughs> gas? <laughs> oh my. <laughs> that was it. She said she'd like to share for this. Yeah. I was smiling and he was she just looked embarrassed. Hey. Or or she's trying to get something out. Uh-huh. <laughs> Too dang on cue. Go ahead. Um it wasn't something that um I didn't know, but it just kind of confirmed. Um, when we talked about our eye gates and our ear gates and our mouth gates, um, it, it just made me more aware of you really have to be um, more alert on what you surround yourself with. Amen. So being alert regarding what's around you, because what you hear actually affects you. Um, I work at hy V two days a week, y'all, two. And in those 16 hours, I literally have to fight every time I go back because there is music playing the entire time. The speakers are in the ceiling. It's over top of all of those machines. And before I know it, I'll find myself dancing to the songs, doing the dances that went with the music that comes on. It, it just like my hard drive kicks in and it's etched in there and you don't realize it. And then next minute you go, oh my gosh, what did you just speak out of your mouth? crop failure on that because while you were singing those songs back in the day you were listening to the beat but now you're listening to the words right and you're like whoa it's funny because their music and i'm pointing jaleel's way in your way their music i would say to them how could you listen to that until they started giving me the lyrics of ours <laughs> And you start realizing every song we were singing was about cheating in the next room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Every song was about me and Mrs. Jones doing our thing going on. You know what I mean? So we, we had all of this music and I mean, you just, you don't realize what you're singing until one day you realize what you are confessing. And then you can't figure out why your relationships are nothing but sexual. Mm -hmm. Why they're nothing but physical. And, and you exchange love for lust. Mm -hmm. and, and if you don't get that lust, love, then you think that they don't love you. If you're not, if they're not asking you to give yourself and you're not giving yourself, automatically you're assuming that they're getting it from somebody else. 
when it could be the person's trying to respect you because you're not choosing to respect yourself. But it's really something when you think about how those lyrics played into that. My son said to me one day, he said, mom, he said, you always talk about our music. We're the product of yours. And I was like, whoa, my mouth just hit the ground because it's a reality. They're the product of what they heard. Hello. You got to use that microphone, baby. Like the evolution of music, there's a whole documentary that talks about um, just how music has evolved from, I mean, pretty much from when music was first created and like the influences of, and just how they tweaked it to be more secular, I guess you would be the best word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jody, were you going to share anything? <clears throat> I just shared last week that when I don't have my, when I don't have my eyes focused on, or my sights set on the Lord, my relationships around me suffer because I get, you know, I start, I get, I take everything personally or I start to get, you know, I get offended easily when I'm not focused on him and who he is and who I am in him. Then I start, you know, when people say something that, you know, I just get offended or upset at things I shouldn't. And so then work relationships um, start to suffer or um, friendships, so. That's good, that's good. Anyone else that would like to share anything from last week that you learned? What were the results of what you learned? How did you adjust or course correct? Because one of the things that we have to recognize is we come in and we feed, 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 but what are we doing with what we're taking in? That's what Bible study is really about. The purpose of us learning how to vet those voices, coming together to discuss the word and the scriptures and, and identifying ways, strategizing on how we apply what we're learning. Excuse me, Mike, thank you. I was just going to say, because we read this in um, Pigs in the Parlor, where this lady worked in a bank and there was a gentleman that came in and was um, like cursing and using the Lord's name in vain all the time. And so I think she said she was she prayed on it, on how to handle the situation. And she started to, under her breath, he couldn't hear her, but she was saying it out loud, but quietly praying against that. And then the next time he came in or no, when she started praying against him, he like got something stuck in his throat, like he couldn't talk or something. And then um, the next time he came in, <laughs> <laughs> he does he doesn't cuss when he comes in the bank anymore. <laughs> wow. So that was just the same thing that we had learned last um Thursday. Just like when you're around stuff like that, it just because I start I start doing it with some individuals myself. I'll when I hear words that shouldn't be coming out of their mouth, I start praying against it and it stops. <laughs> so I mean it mean not it just stops for that moment so it's like a constant like you have to like you know constantly fight have that battle spiritual right. warfare so and that's it the thing is with that when we battle like um being in an environment where people cuss all the time at high V, when i walked in they were just trash talking all the time like they would just drop the f-bomb and call each other bees and all kinds of stuff and I said, I don't like that. I'm going to ask you guys to come up with other words because I don't want that around me. Flat out, I asked them not to cuss around me. And so the thing is, we can pray against it, but if we don't teach them how to replace that verbiage with something else, we're just going to constantly be fighting against the same thing. You know, because we're not with these people 24 hours a day. So as soon as they get away from us, they're in the bathroom, they're on the telephone with their friends who cuss like they do. They're going to go right back to the same pattern of bay. And so um, somebody, it's funny because I posted a t-shirt that said, don't cuss around me. I'm one of those proper Christians. Oh, yes. And I called my son out and one of the girls that work at the bakery. And I said, I'm going to wear this every Monday and Wednesday. And uh, Miss Leola said, she said she is one of our um, church members who attends online only because of health issues. And she also lives in Texas now. 
but still completely connected in every way. She said, um, I would tell my students, she was a teacher. She said, I would tell them, instead of saying the cuss word, I need you to put a piece of fruit in place of the cuss word. And she said, it was, they sound so stupid. And she said, I wanted them to hear how goofy it sounds to say these words when you're so intelligent. Mm -hmm. There's so many other words that you could use. And so she would utilize that as a strategy. And so one of the things that we can do is have them to do something like that. We've got to give them a different strategy so that they'll change the verbiage that they have, the vernacular. Give them the right vernacular so that when they are speaking, they're sounding intelligent, number one. Because the reason we use cuss words, we're not really making any bigger of a point, are we? Right. It's not making our point any stronger. Um, the only thing that it's doing is it's showing that we're really frustrated or that we lack the education to be able to say what it is that we're trying to say. And so in all of that, what's really important is that, remember, it always starts with a thought. We attach an emotion to it. We act on the emotion. It dictates our destiny. But are we watching first where those thoughts are coming from? what the thoughts are saying, what's taking up mental real estate in our heads. And so we're still in the soul under control, vetting the voices um, and recognizing the voices that we're hearing in our head. What is it that we're hearing on a daily basis? What is it that is um, coming in through our ear gates? And are we vetting them? Are we taking the chance to identify where it's coming from? What is it saying? Where is it leading us? Um, is it building us up or is it tearing us down? When you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you hear? What are some of the things that you hear? Do you hear, oh, girl, you look good? Or are you hearing, oh, my gosh, why did you put this on today? You probably should have put something else on. What things are you hearing? And where is that voice coming from? So we left off after going through several different topics we were starting to talk about how God speaks and the importance of hearing and knowing God's voice. And so the second part of the lesson that we're going into is how he speaks. What is his, um, how does he transmit to us? How does he communicate with us? And so we're going to look at dreams. He speaks to us, visions, and then through people as well. Um, the third one, which hopefully we'll be able to get to that by like March or April, um, what intercepts our transmission. So we're going to look at those 15 most common strongholds and the fruit of those strongholds. Then we're going to look at the vetting process, which is use of the word, Holy Spirit, and your discernment, and then heating versus haughtiness. And that's the issues of human intelligence. So when we left off, we were talking about how God speaks. And Ms. Vilda really nailed it because she talked about that cross, that being, making sure that um, the one that goes straight up and down, which is the one that's actually planted. Mm -hmm. If you think about the cross, it's not the one that goes side to side that's planted in the ground that holds true to the foundation. It's the vertical one that goes up and down. So as we were talking about that, we were talking about God speaking and the importance of hearing and knowing his voice. So we looked at Genesis 1 and 3, where it said that he spoke. And when he spoke, things began to happen. Um, that word is... um. Amer, which means to say, to speak, to utter, to answer, to say in one's heart, to think, to command, to promise, to intend. It's actually um, occurs in the Old Testament 5,318 times, which tells you that God speaks and that it's important that we know that he opens his mouth to speak to us. He shares things with us. The question is, are we listening or is transmission being disrupted by other things? Is it that horizontal be that's causing us to miss what God is saying? Is it that we are allowing the enemy to disrupt that transmission because he's so busy talking that we don't even realize that God is trying to overspeak him, but our ear is tuned into what the enemy is saying because that's what we're used to. We looked at Matthew 16 verses 13 through 20 where God um, spoke to Peter and Peter revealed that Jesus was the Messiah, that he is the Christ. So that was one of the first um, times in the New Testament where God, where it was revealed that God could speak to other people. It was one of the, the times. 
Hebrews 1 and 2 is what I want to look at right now. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. You can pull that up for me. Um, Jesus spoke after the cross. Um, yep, we know that. He spoke after the cross. Um, he spoke to Saul. He spoke to Peter in a vision. But I want us to, this is going to be our theme scripture for this. Because what I need us to understand is that God speaks to us. Hebrews chapter one, verses one through two. Thank you. And it reads, God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophet. So the first thing we got to recognize is he wasn't speaking to everybody at first. He was speaking to the prophets and the prophet's job was then to in turn reveal to the people what God was saying. Go ahead. Has in these last days spoken to us by his son. His son is Jesus whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom he also, through whom also he made the world. So this is the way that God wants to communicate to each and every one of us individually. What this is telling us is remember, there used to be a mediator. There was the prophets and there were the priests, but now he wants to speak directly to us individually. And in order for us to be able to hear what he's saying, the first thing that we have to do is deal with what is clogging our hearing. What are some of the things that gets in the way of us hearing the voice of God? Let's talk about this for a second. What are some of the things that get in the way? And use your microphone, please. Relationships, finance, um, our own will. Okay. Talk about it. Relationships. Start there. So relationships, it could be that if we are married, we can put the stuff before you put the will of God. Um, you'll put your spouse first. And what I mean by that is you will cater to your spouse more than you do cater to what God requires of you. You will dispatch here to take care of him. Yes, in the meantime, you can have a spouse, but you've got to own balance. And sometimes that becomes Same. difficult when you are married. Um, sometimes um, your own will. You may have a desire to have something done and you prayed about it. You believe that God's going to do it. You may not have necessarily heard the voice of God, but you had an inkling that this is what he wanted for you because your will is so strong and you're not really paying attention to what his will is. And then when it doesn't come through with it, that causes an odd against him and then you just go further into your will a lot of times instead of backtracking and saying, okay, God, I missed that mark. Where do you, where would you have me go? Um, a lot of times finances can do that to you. Um, if you are bogged down with the weight of this world, then a lot of times you're going to miss the voice of God because of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Let's, let's kind of unpack this because she, she went through a whole lot, didn't she? Mm -hmm. Let's start with the relationships. So God will tell us to do things. And if we seek ye first the kingdom of God, we're talking about that vertical being. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of its righteousness, knowing that everything else is going to be added. But yet we're trying to um, work beside a spouse or care for a spouse or um, meet the needs of our spouse. So maybe what ends up happening is we're hearing one thing from the Lord, but our spouse is hearing something different. What do you do in that situation? How do you vet the voice? Let's talk about that. How do you vet the voices? I think in that case, you would vet the voices by what is your spouse doing? How are they leading you? If you happen to be the female, 
How is the man leading you? Is he following the order in which God has displayed? If he's not following the order in which God has displayed, it becomes a tough conversation because you have to say, I believe that the word says this or show them in the word. This is what the word says. And we're not completely following this. So therefore, we're out of alignment with God. And I'm trying to get into alignment with God. You may not be there right now, but I'm attempting to do that. So this is what God is showing me that I need to do. I'm not trying to force you to do that, but this is what God is showing me to do. Um, I can remember as a child, um, my mother used to tell me, you know, when you grew up in the church of God in Christ, my father had never been saved, that I know. Um, my mother would go to church, and my mother was always a tither, so no matter what money she got, she always made sure that she tithed. She would spend a lot of time in the church house because she knew that her husband wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. My father would get upset and tell her that she couldn't go to church anymore, but she would continue to go. It came to the point to where my father, the church man, would come and get her, and he pulled his gun out. Mm -hmm. Wow. And so my mother just began to go into her prayer closet, and she began to pray. God does some mysterious things. He removed him completely. So she was able to continue to go to church. Now, along some lines later on, she backslid and then later on got back into the church. But if you are sincere in wanting to serve God, there will be bumps in the road that you're going to encounter. But if you are truly sincere, God will make a way. And sometimes it's not the way that you think it's going to be. But it's still a way that it's made. Amen. And so when you're vetting those voices, one of the first things that we have to do is we have to actually look at scripture, but we also have to look at behavior. Because if you are saying one thing, but your behavior is doing something different, how can I trust that what you're hearing from God? And this is for the man and the woman. How can I trust that what you're hearing from God is true? The Bible tells us that we are to follow our spouses, right? But let's be clear. If Vincent Moody starts walking contrary to the word of God and the will of God, I'm not following him. Why is that? Ananias and Sapphira. Let's look at Acts, the, I think it's fifth chapter. Look at me go. <laughs> look at Acts, the fifth chapter. Verse one. And this is where you see that separation between following the relationship and following Jesus Christ. And everybody's got it, say amen. Mm -hmm. This is why it's so critical that we have a relationship with him for ourselves. All right. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. So just so that I can give you context for those who haven't read this part, what happened is the church came together. It grew by the thousands. They sold all that they possessed so that every man would have what they needed. They laid it at the apostles' feet to distribute to the community. So what happened is those who were rich evened things out so that those who weren't as rich had what they needed, as well as those who were rich still had what they needed. What would happen if every rich person would start to help out those around? So instead of me and Vince living in a 15 bedroom house with seven bathrooms that no one ever comes and visits us, those bedrooms just go with, along with dust. I'm not even cleaning them, right? What would happen if we downsized to a house that was big enough to allow our family to come over like we enjoy having dinner with them. But ain't nobody really staying all night though, right? Them grandkids, they got one night, one night only, <laughs> right? But what would happen if we were able to take the proceeds from that and bless the community? Or would we rather sit on the hill with our great big house and look important? So they brought it, they laid it at the apostles' feet, verse three. But Peter said, Ananias, 
Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but God. Isn't this something? Because you still see this in the church today. People will come in and they will do things so that the pastor or the apostle will see them, not realizing that they're not putting on a show for me because I can't do anything for you. But God is watching everything that you do. Everything. We care more about that horizontal beam and what people think than recognizing and realizing the impact on our relationship with the vertical beam with Jesus. Isn't that something? Let's go to verse five. Then Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and breathed his last. I'm so glad that there's grace, y'all. Because do you realize how many people would be dropping dead right now? So great fear came upon all those who heard these things. And the young man arose and wrapped him up, carried him out, and buried him. Now, look what happened. Three hours later, when his wife came in, not knowing what had happened, now hold up. Everybody watched your husband lie, drop dead. They carried him out and buried him, but nobody told you that this just happened to your husband? So she doesn't know what happened. And Peter answered her, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. She said, yes, for so much. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you have agreed together to test the spirit of the Lord? Look, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out. Then immediately she fell down at his feet and breathed her last. And the young man came in and found her dead and carrying her out, buried her by her husband. Now, the reason why I had us to look at this is because we're talking about relationships. Um, Ms. Vilda brought up relationships. And so in that relationship, even though they were husband and wife, we have to remember that it's important that, number one, we recognize when I stand before Jesus Christ, guess what? Vince ain't going to be standing there next to me. Judgment is going to be based on what I've done, not on what Vincent did or what he told me I had to do. I still had a choice, just as uh, Saf Sapphira had a choice. She didn't have to follow her husband. She could have went on a camp clean and said, you know what? We lie. As a matter of fact, we're going to give this to y'all and we're going to keep this for ourselves. If they would have just told the truth, I don't think either of them would have died. But both of them chose to test the Holy Spirit in the apostle. And they both dropped dead. So the key in all of this that we want to take away, our relationship with God, hearing the voice of God, filtering out the voices of relationship. It may not be a spouse. What about your best friends who aren't saved? What about your children who are trying to pull you in a different direction? Even though you know where they're trying to pull you is not right. We don't think about those relationships or that coworker that you're close to. We got to look beyond, you know, just the immediate, our spouse or our boyfriend. Think about all of the different connections that you have. Another one is parents. I will never forget there was one time um, my sister was trying to get a job and she had worked for me. And y'all, she worked for one day. <laughs> I'm not joking. It was one day. And when she came in, because I'm her sister, she came in, she was like, Ooh, we had a good time last night, blah, 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 blah. I could smell it on her breath. She had to keep leaving to go get drinks of water because, you know, she's cleaning theaters. So she's literally, um, she's sweating it out. Jalil can tell you, you're going to sweat it out. And so um, she didn't come back. So my mom called me and she was like, hey, um, Teresa has a chance for a job. I was like, oh, really? Praise the Lord. Da, 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 da. She was like, yeah, but um, they're looking for some uh, references. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> she said, and she's going to put you down as one. I said, oh. <laughs> it wasn't, oh, okay. And so my mom said, 
just make sure you give them a good reference. She's going to say she worked for you from this day to this day. And I said, Ur. at the end of the night, mommy, I love you, but I got to be able to hit my knees and stand before God. I have to be able to stand before God. And she said, she needs a job. I said, and I need God. And man, when I tell you, if she could have hung up that cell phone and made it go, boom, she would have. <laughs> but I am here to tell you, I just heard click. <laughs> I was it. She was gone. I was like, I'm sorry, but I, I, I won't lie. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm sorry. I can't do it. And so when, what about when it's your parent? Have you ever thought about how a parent can lead you in a direction where it will disrupt? Come on, we're talking about the disruption in the communication. It will disrupt your communication with the Lord. Finances, she brought that up. Are we living above our means to where we have to work 15,000 jobs because we want to have this status and everybody see this beautiful home that we have, but yet we really can't afford it. So we got to work 15,000 jobs and we can't serve the Lord. We can't serve in the house. We can't do this. We can't do that. We can't do anything. We barely make Bible study because we're really working while we're doing Bible study. Are we living above our means to where our finances become a hindrance to us hearing and heeding the word of God? Is there is that clogging our ears? Are we not able to hear? You had one more. What was it? Our own will. Our own will. Our own will. Yeah. Our, our yeah. own will. I think that the will becomes really tricky though, too, because of the fact that there are so many different avenues in this world. We talk about like Cece and Jalil's age group. The things that they are facing now, we yeah. would have never of facing mm -hmm. and I had to be cognizant of what I say to the younger people when I talk to them now because I'm like oh you ain't seen nothing yet no I haven't seen your nothing yet. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that is and so now there are so many different temptations that are out there mm -hmm. and if you are top heavy with the cross that also means that you're top heavy with your will too because that's right. relationship with God isn't where it should be. As Apostle said, that beam isn't planted deep. And so now you're falling more into your will. And the way of this world now is the will. Mm -hmm. What did the Bible say about the last and evil days? Not only would you be pouring out flesh, but you're going to be selfish too. And you, if you look at this world and you see how self-centered so many people are, they will claim God, but their hearts are far from, from him. him, extremely far from him. Because if you claim God, you're going to want to do his will mm -hmm. and not just your will. Sometimes it becomes difficult if you're paying attention to the things that are going on around the world. I was listening to someone and they were talking about a prophecy and they were saying that people now are gone past angry. They're enraged. Mm -hmm. And Trapped. they're yeah, the the will of them is so animated now mm -hmm. that it's it's just hard to believe some of the things that are going on if you don't know your work. Mm -hmm. It comes to no surprise. And now there is this great fear that's going among the land as well. There, every day that I turn on the news and something about the next war that's coming through and it's going to be catastrophic and if you pay attention to these things that will begin to change your world as well. Mm -hmm. yes, good stuff. Anyone else want to share? <laughs> You're doing a great job. <laughs> Amen. I want to look at a couple of roads that are listed in the Bible. One is the road to Emmaus, and one is the road to Damascus. I look at them as the road um, that would clear confusion and the road of rebellion. So we're going to start at Luke 24. We're going to go to verse 36 and read through 49. 
So this is after Jesus had um, died on the cross and the disciples are trying to figure out what in the world to do. Luke what? Luke 24, 36. Online, are you there? Actually, it's 13. I'm sorry. Yes, we are here. Luke 24, verse 13. I'm sorry. The road to Emmaus. <laughs> I love this. It's so hard to stay focused because <laughs> you got little Missy over here on the floor talking about that. Da, 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 da. Well, and I'm trying, huh? She learned how to say dad, dad, that was what she says. Aw, just start going, mom, mom, yeah. mom, mom. She'll look at me like I'm psycho or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what mom wants. Wow. Wow. So this is right after the women had come to the tomb and um, they saw that the stone was rolled away. And so... They didn't find Jesus' body. And what they wanted to do was they're, you know, they're standing there perplexed about it. And then they see these two angels and they're like, you know, why do you seek the living among the dead? So all that Jesus had taught them, the angels are letting them know, guess what? He's living. And he, the angel reminded them that he told them that he would be delivered into the hands of sinful men and crucified, but on the third day that he would rise again. Amen. And so um, Peter came and then he ran to the tomb and he saw the linen clothes were folded up and he left marveling at what had happened. And so in verse 13, it shifts to the road to Emmaus. It says, now the whole two of them were traveling that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was seven miles from Jerusalem. We're talking about vetting the voices. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. So it was while they conversed and reasoned that Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were restrained so that they did not know him. And he said to them, what kind of conversation is this that you have, that you have with one another as you walk and you're sad? Then the one whose name was Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only stranger in Jerusalem? And you've not known the things which are happened there in these days. And he said to them, what things? So they said to him, the things concerning Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet. I want y'all to pay attention to that. Now, after all Jesus did, after everything that went down, after the revelation of who he was, they still call him what? Prophet. A prophet. So they didn't recognize him as what? Messiah yet. Mm. So there was some confusing so confusion. So one of the things that we've got to recognize is who Jesus really is. Because if we don't understand who Jesus is, this is why when we did the names of Jesus, it was so important because it helps you to recognize and understand who he is. He's not just a prophet. He is the Messiah. So it says, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And how the chief priests and the rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. The fact that they didn't understand that he actually had already redeemed them. When he gave his life on the cross and he rose again, they were redeemed if they cho chose to believe. Indeed, besides all this, today is the third day since these things happened. Yes, and certain women of our company who arrived at the tomb early astonished us. When they didn't find his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. And certain of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but him they did not see. Then he said to them, O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. The prophets prophesied of Jesus Christ. Jesus was not just a prophet. They weren't just prophesying about another prophet. They prophesied about him being the Messiah, the Christ, the deliverer of Israel. 
Ought not the Christ have to suffer these things to enter into his glory? And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them on all the scriptures, the things concerning himself. So notice what Jesus did. As he spoke to them, he went to where the word. Anytime God speaks to you, it will always confirm the word of God. The word of God is always going to confirm what? The will of God. He said he will perfect those things concerning. Come on. So if he's going to perfect the things concerning us, regardless of whatever is out of order in my life right now, God's going to deal with that thing. And he's going to make sure that it's perfected so that I don't miss him. So that when he begins to release the blessings, when he begins to rain down revelation, when he begins to open up heaven so that I can have what I need, he's going to perfect it so that I'm where I'm supposed to be when I'm supposed to be there. It's so interesting. I had a meeting today with one of my members in alms. What was so amazing about it is this. She had written a paper in April of 2023. And it wasn't until now that the paper she wrote in April, and we kept trying to get to this paper and kept trying to get to this paper all 2023 and could not get to this paper. We get to that paper today, and do you understand? All of the questions she had in that paper, God had answered on the trip while we were gone. My God, do you realize the importance of us being in line and in sync with our Father? Do we not understand that he will perfect things concerning us, that the scriptures that he gives to us about our call, about what it is that he's having us to do in the earth, the things that he has built in us. There is a timing. There were seeds planted back then, but now she's starting to see the harvest. And you can't strip those roots. The very thing she questioned, she's about to do them on Sunday. My God, the very things she questioned. But notice, it took a couple of years. Terry can tell you, that first year was all questions. <laughs> when I say I ain't leaving you because you got questions, I had the question of questioner. <laughs> I had the question of questioner. I mean, it never stopped. There was a question for everything. And in two years, you witnessed it yourselves. Do you see what's happening? Do you see the growth? Do you see the development? She's became a teacher. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you see what's happening? He will perfect those things concerning us. Yes. He will perfect it. Does it take time? Is it frustrating? Oh my God, yeah. It's frustrating. <laughs> but somebody did it for me. Mm -hmm. I think when I had your meeting, one of the things in his paper said, we have to remember to have grace. The same grace we need extended to us, we have to in turn extend it to others. Mm -hmm. And you cannot fight what you see. It's happening. It's a wrap. It's going down. So he wants us to understand when he speaks to us, he is always going to bring us back to the word. The word will not lie. God's word never returns unto him void, but it strikes the mark. It accomplishes that what he sent it to do, and it prospers, Isaiah 55 and 11. He will always lead us back to the word. Why? Because he is the word. John 1 says what? In the beginning was the word, and the word was, and the word was, my God. He is the word, so he'll always lead us back to himself. Does that make sense? So when you're vetting the voices, it should never be contrary to the word. If it's contrary to the word, you are not hearing God. You are hearing flesh. You are hearing will. You are hearing desire. One of the things that I love the most, I laugh every time I see it. I try not to, but I do it. What's amazing is when people say that God told them 
Now this prophet was in Israel. She called me, that was an expensive phone call. And she called me to tell me that she found her husband in Israel and that God confirmed it using Psalm 2. And I had just studied Psalm 2 and I'm like, that's not what that says. It said, I will give you the Gentile for your inheritance. He's a Jew. Help me understand why you thought that he was a Gentile. But then she turns around and she says, oh, and the Lord said, there will be sex in this relationship before marriage. Uh -oh. <laughs> Hello. Do you not understand just because you're in Israel does not make you automatically close to God? You just Hello. made us laugh out loud. As long as you don't fart, you're good. So <laughs> literally, <laughs> literally, this is what she said to me. And I rebuked her right then and there. Prophet of God, you're telling me that my God is telling you to do things contrary to his will, contrary to his word. So you're telling me my God's a lie. Help me make that make sense. Either God is true. Or God is alive. It's one or the other. But she tried to make me believe that this is what God, I said, no, man. Well, here's what I'm going to do. You can believe what you believe, but I'm getting ready to pray before we get off this phone because this conversation is done. And so we had a good prayer. And next minute, you know, you hear that. <laughs> and then it starts coming out. So in this, we must remember when the Lord speaks to us, he will always bring us to himself. He is the word. He will always confirm the word of God. This is why it's so important that you know the will of God concerning you. Recently, I had somebody come to me and tell me the Lord said that you are supposed to be doing thus and such, and this is in your wheelhouse, and this is what you need to do. And I said, Call on me. None of that aligns with my commission. I appreciate what you believe the Lord told you, but that does not align with my commission. So the answer is no. We don't have to be mean about it. We just have to say, God didn't tell me that. Thank you. Now, if you are filtering out what God is saying, this is so important about knowing the will of God concerning you because your flesh will speak. When the Lord tries to push you to do something you've never done, and he uses your apostle to push you to do things you've never done, <laughs> you can dig your feet in the ground, and you can go kicking and screaming. But the reality is, whether I do it or God uses your job to do it, literally, People have said, nope, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do it this way anyway. And next minute, you know, it shows right up on your job. The very thing I was trying to get you to deal with back here shows up here on your job. So we got to make sure that we unclog our ears. Our desires have a voice. Our will has a voice. The people in our lives sometimes can have too much of a voice. This is where sometimes you got to go to the place where you fast. And you pray and you listen for the voice of God and the will of God concerning you, because otherwise you'll end up like a vagabond all over the place because people will drive all over the place. I literally met with Kamika this morning and we talked about it because there's a person that like every five minutes, they've got this new wonderful idea and this new this and this new that and you should be over here and come over there. And I, I mean, they're all over the place. And, and I'm like, I appreciate that. But no, I'm over here. This is what is on my plate. These are the things that I have to accomplish for the kingdom. And I know where it's going to end. Donita. I was just going to ask, like, I'm trying to give me the words. So like when I, like, like when you said um, someone comes to you and says, well, God told me that this should be going, we should do this, but it doesn't align with what your or what's in like, for instance, I'll give an example, like in Tijuana, like I felt God wanted me to get us up earlier and do stretches and stuff, but we weren't sure how to fit that in time. And so I'm like, okay, was that really you God or, 
is this something you really want me to do? And then I, it kept coming to me. So I'm like, okay, usually that's how I, with me and God communicate. Like it keeps, like he keeps planting it in me until I finally am obedient to him. Mm -hmm. But I have, like, I fight against my own flesh because I don't want to go against like anybody mm -hmm. else, but I'm supposed to be more listening to God. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? And so in, in that situation, I hear God, let's say I were you, I hear God tell me, get up 15 minutes early and stretch. Okay. So you get up 15 minutes earlier and stretch. Hey guys, I'm going to get down here at five 30. If you guys want to come stretch with me, you're more than welcome to come. And that's it. Okay. And you did that every morning. That's not even a, a question. Well, I just didn't know how to like, how to, it's hard. Like, I don't know if it's just because I'm still kind of new at oh, being obedient to the Lord. Yeah. And I am intimidated like by, um, go, doing what he says and, and going, you know, coming to people and being brave and coming to them and telling them that stuff. I don't know if I just continue just to keep praying about that stuff when that comes about. I just didn't know. But like, you, if you knew that it, that the way the Lord speaks to you is he keeps pressing you until you do it, you answered your own question. The Lord spoke to me. So now I go to the leaders and I say, hey, this is what I'm hearing. Um, is it okay if I invite people? I'm going to be down here stretching from this time to this time. Is that okay? Because literally he'll give you the solution to it. Which we're he did. Gonna, right. We're not going to cut into prayer. And I can't remember how we, I was like, well, that's easy. It's 15 minutes earlier, right? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it was just like that when we talked about it. And so literally you're fighting your flesh that says, well, what if you're, what if, um, are they going to listen to you? The enemy starts getting in and talking, over talking God. So you, you're literally answering your own question by what you're describing, but recognizing what it is. And then in turn, having a strategy to fight against it because if he won the round the first time that way guess what he's gonna keep trying to win every round so this is a war of which one is going to win what voice are you going to hear and what voice are you going to follow stretching if you notice every morning during prayer there would be periods where i would watch um george down there stretching himself out in the middle of prayer because he had to be prepared for the things that we had to do that day. Yeah. And he knows the surgeries that he's had and the havoc that not taking care of the body the way we're supposed to has wreaked on his body. So there were times literally that he was stretching during prayer. So it wasn't that you didn't hear from God. It was that you were afraid to speak out. I heard from God. So what you're going to have to fight is one, your flesh. Two, the enemy going, ain't nobody going to listen to what you're saying. Ain't nobody going to join you. I don't care if nobody joins you. I don't care if nobody shows up at this Bible study. I'm not going to stop teaching. I'm not going to quit. I, I keep going with healthy temples. <laughs> I'm going to preach as if there's a thousand there. I'm not going to stop. Because I'm, I'm still just like two years into my walk versus, um, just you're gonna do that? seven years. Seven years. Are you intimidated by people that have been there longer than me? Probably because they know. So if God is the ultimate of all power, you're intimidated when it comes to this work that you're not. Because I don't. Um, I, to be honest, it's because I don't fear the Lord the way I'm supposed to fear him yet. Good job. Yes. Good job. Mm -hmm. Say that word again. Please pull up the definition of practice. Cause I was very scared to go to Terry and George and tell him, but it kept coming to me and I'm like, oh, you know. No, but we're, 
we're really tired and to get up earlier. I think that's what kept, oh, help, help. And I did not. going to happen it's inevitable you know because you're literally like a baby you're a toddler you're learning to take your step you're gonna fall and then here's daddy over here come on get up get up you got it you got it now try it again fall again get back up again it's like you know you hit those mm -hmm. those adult years where it's like okay god said this and she didn't just get to to be an apostle you know overnight like and to say Thus say the Lord. Like, Give me the other he, one also. Like, you the know, other on, definition. You know how we always talk about she's reading our mail. It hasn't always that been one. like that. Like she had to, you know, go through these trainings with other apostles, with other people that are in the faith, and you know, take the the blows, the correction, the rebukes, and different stuff like that. So and especially when you're going to a leader and you're saying, like, well, I think that God said this, that is the that is safety. That's it. Say it again. When you're, when you're Say it again. To a leader, that is safety. That's safety. And so I, there have been many a times where I have gone to Apostle O.C., even Kamika, and said, I think the Lord is saying this. And they said, well, hold up. <laughs> Just that last week, something about this, that doesn't make any sense. And so, you know, it's about they're, they're trying to get you to um, get your fine tuning in to really pay attention to the small things. Mm -hmm. It's the little leaven that leavens the whole lump. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the small boxes that spoil the whole lump. Oh, and so they're trying to get you to focus on those things. And it's okay if you go to them and you mess up. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid of that. Because and you have to shut down that fear. You know, fear, because spirit yep. of fear and perfection is going yep. to try to ruin, you know, the progress that you're making in God. And you have the power over it. It doesn't have the power over it. Say that. Let's Thank look you. at the definition of practice. Verse uh, number two, not verse two. <laughs> Second <laughs> verse, same as a verse. All right, number two. <laughs> to perform or work at repeatedly so as to become proficient to train by repeated exercises. So the way that you learn the voice of God, you got to go, this is what I heard. This is what I heard. Now, Bridget has been doing the, this is what I heard for the last two years. So now you hear me pushing her to stop prefacing it with 15. And then there was a wind and I dreamed and I, I tell her, okay, Bridget, just say it. <laughs> you hear from God, Bridget, just say it now. Just say it. You don't have to go through all of that. I feel like this and I feel like that. You hear from God, Bridget. Stop. Just say it. Because when you start fluffing it too much, people know that you are uncomfortable and they'll check out. Mm. They won't hear nothing you're saying. So I am now training her to, because she's not at a, a church that necessarily is um, understands prophetics, um, that that issue of you coming up to your pastor saying the lord is saying da -da 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 -da, where i'm pushing her saying no you say it you say it it may not be received the same way so that's why you hear her doing that she has been i mean getting pulled on pulled on pulled on for the last two years pulling everything out of that girl that's in her and now she's starting to uncover stuff she didn't even realize was in her mantle Today, all she could do was, ah, it's in there. Yes, it is. You know? So right now, you're at the state of 
walking, toddling, and maybe even sitting up sometimes. You sit, dream up by herself, and sometimes she's just going to go shoop and fall over. You know, but eventually she'll be able to do just like Messiah. Messiah right now is sitting up. He reaches for the toy that he wants, drags it to him because he's not crawling to it. He's just going to reach over and drag it over to him and look at you like what? <laughs> and then he's going to start pushing the buttons and make it play the very song that he wants it to play. But eventually he's going to crawl. Eventually he's going to toddle. Eventually he's going to move more on his own. That's where you are. Be okay where you are. You're right where he needs you to be. Because you got to think about it. Just like the, on the road to Emmaus, if you go back to the scripture, verse 28. Can I ask a quick question? Um, yes, after I answer this. Okay. Who am I talking to? Hey, Shelby. Shelby. Okay, <laughs> just a second. Let me let me answer this for your mom. Okay, Verse you're good. Okay, I won't forget you. Verse 28, we're still on the road to Emmaus. It looks like we're going to get to the road of rebellion next week. Then they drew near to the village where they were going, and he indicated that he would have gone further. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to stay with them. Now it came to pass, as he sat at the table with them, that he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were open, and they knew him, and he vanished from their sight. Whenever you're walking on the road with the Lord, he's going to reveal himself to you. This past week, a couple of weeks, while we were in Mexico, God started unveiling stuff to you. Your mind was blown daily. Daily. I mean, you were like... And I know that there were days you were like looking at our faces and we're thinking, if you would just let us go to bed, we might stretch with you in the morning. No, I won't. But <laughs> I did not think that. <laughs> but the reality is you came back like, what just happened? What did God just do? Oh my. And you came back and you were so full each day. There was one day you were like, I wasn't connected. And it was because God blessed you first thing in the morning for your diligence. It was right after you started getting up and doing the workouts. Mm -hmm. Did you catch it? No, not till just now. Uh-huh. So you get up, you're doing the workout, and you're like, I was obedient. I heard from God. And people even joined you. Then you got that amazing call about Mike was praying with the kids, and you were like, I got this. We good. <laughs> and you checked out on everything else. And then the Lord was like, okay, but we're not done. And you got right back in. And the next day, whoa, God, you just blew my mind again. Are you kidding me? Am I right? We saw it. So now the Lord has opened your eyes just like he did. You're on your walk to Emmaus. You're on the road to Emmaus. Is what's happening. So understand that the Lord is revealing himself to you. You're beginning to see things very differently. And it's literally helping you to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of who he is as your Lord and as your Savior. Mm -hmm. This is just the beginning. Understand, perform, work at repeatedly so that you can become proficient. I didn't get to this place, just like Jalil said, I didn't get here overnight. Even my apostle, she tells the story. She saw this couple that came up for prayer and she's praying for them. She's prophesying over them. She saw handcuffs. And she said, you are cuffed in the spirit and got to prophesying into that thing. And her apostle pulled her aside. What are you doing? She said, I saw handcuffs. So I prophesied over the handcuffs that they were cuffed together. Said, that man is still married. How he going to be cuffed and married to anybody? Wow. He's still married. And she had to take that rebuke. You talk about a kick in the stomach. But she a puzzle. <laughs> Become proficient. Keep working at it. You're going to fall. You're going to make mistakes. Pick your face up and let's go. People's lives are on the line. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for you. Shelby. 
<laughs> I guess I had, I don't know if it was answered or not. But it was something along the lines of, would God ever give you two tasks? Like, and I guess, like, I guess you would have to ask God if he gave you two tasks. Like, which one would you want me to do first? You know what I mean? So, two so like, T E S T? Task. Task. T A S. Yeah. This is yeah, why you like, gotta be in here because it's hard <laughs> to hear. I tried. I'm sorry. Very hard to hear. Bring you behind the Bible study. So I will. Uh huh. So <laughs> um. Yep. So uh, is it possible that the Lord could give you two tasks at one time? I work multiple tasks every day of my life. Mm -hmm. But you have to understand the order of imp importance. You have to understand your role in the task that was given to you because sometimes your role is just to plant the seed or just to water. God's going to get the increase. You need to know what your responsibility is and don't go any further. The prophet was told to go in, release the prophetic word, and get out before the sun went down. Hmm. So he had two tasks. Get in, drop the word, get out. He ended up allowing a, a prophet, an older prophet, who came and told him, now this prophet, the first prophet, heard from God himself. This older prophet comes over to him and says, an angel of the Lord appeared to me, said that I'm supposed to bring you in the house and let you stay with me. And here's what ends up happening. Exactly what God told him. If you stick around, you're going to die there. And exactly what happened he tried to leave out afterwards and he ended up getting killed by, I believe, a bear mm -hmm. because he listened to the older prophet instead of listening to the voice of God. Know your responsibility. Know your assignment. Do it and get out. I work multiple tasks every day of my life. I don't, I don't get a one-tasker. That, that is not a thing. There is no one tasking in my life. So for you, is it possible? Absolutely. But the question becomes, why is he giving you two tasks? What is your responsibility? What is your assignment? Do it and get out. Does that make sense? Yes. And Do you have a hard time choosing between your tasks? I don't choose. I ask for instruction. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> so it's not my choice. If he's giving me an assignment, remember, they're not tasks, they're assignments. Assignments, sorry. People, yeah. I don't take engagements. I take assignments. If I'm coming in to speak to your church, I'm on assignment to go and uproot, to tear down, to break up, to destroy, but then to turn around and to build so if I'm on an assignment, he tells me what to do. I don't choose. He tells me what to do. This is why knowing the voice, that vertical, is so important. Because if I don't know the voice of God, and at first I had to bring it and call and say, prophetess, I just saw this. Apostle, I just saw that. This just happened. I didn't I don't know. And then they would have to walk me through. Okay, talk to me about what you're seeing, what you're hearing. That's what those conversations are about. When I get them on the phone, you best believe I'm coming in with a very solid agenda. We ain't on there just talking for hours with no aim or no reason because they've got a million other people that they have to do the same thing with. Mm -hmm. So when I get to them, I'm respectful of their time and I say to them, this is what I saw. This is what's going on. And this is what I believe I'm seeing. What are you hearing? What am I missing? And they're going to listen to the voice of the Lord for me and make sure that what I'm doing is what he needs me to do. Again, that vertical beam is the first thing that we need to focus on because we put so much on this beam and we go to 15 prophets and 25 pastors, 100 apostles to ask them the same question. Why did you go to the first three if you wasn't going to trust what they said? Mm -hmm. 
I have to be able to trust you with a prophecy and I have to be able to trust you with a rebuke. Otherwise, I'm not even calling. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to call you. Oh my gosh, we all have. <laughs> and we've all fallen. We've all made the mistake and fallen. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's happened. And so, is it possible that he would give you two tasks? Absolutely. That is very possible. Every day of my life, there's more than one task. You need a mic. <laughs> Especially if you're going through something and he needs to get your attention. I can't tell you how many times I've had to witness to somebody when I was down in the dump of my soul. I'd be like, oh, Lord, please. Anybody that knows me, anywhere I go, I don't know a stranger, and I always run into somebody that I know would never ever fail. And I'll go somewhere and I'll be like, God, please don't let me run into anybody. <laughs> I don't talk to anybody from the road and go, here comes somebody in my path that I Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but trusting that if we believe that God is going to see us through that he's going to perfect things concerning us that he's going to ensure that everything we need is provided supplied it all comes back to our faith and what he's doing in our life if all things work together for the good all things work together for the good period there's no Getting around it. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. Any other questions before we close out in prayer? Prayer requests. And it was hard to not drink no coffee tonight. Oof. I, I do have a prayer request. Okay. Um, so we're still in the process of trying to figure out what's going on with my godson, um, Zion. His, there was a vein that's on the lower part of his abdomen that was enlarged, I believe, very big. And um, like I told you guys the last time, there's like three knots on the top of his head. I believe that those three knots, when he was younger, he was attacked by the family dog. Mm -hmm. And there was a surgery that had to take place and it just something probably is going on up there, but um, they're still trying to figure out, you know, why is his veins uh, growing so large and all this other stuff that's going on him. And, you know, um, I've been trying to walk myself through it alone. And this is the first time I've like said anything in a couple of months since the last time that he was here. And, um, you know, the enemy, he tries to whisper in your head, you know, at random moments of the day, like, oh, he's not going to make it. Stuff like that. And, uh... It's okay. Jesus. And I've been fighting a lot, you know, and, uh, He'll like call me because he got some phone now and he'll say like, Coco, what are you doing? Like, can I come over? And sometimes it's like, I'm not gonna lie, it's hard to see him, you know, because it's like one minute he's cool, like he's so great, and the next minute, like he's in the hospital and they're trying to run tests on him and trying to figure out what's going on with him. And you know, it's it's a lot. Like, oh my god, children are so special to me, and they're they are a part of me. Like, they are, you know, something that God gave to me to be responsible for. And I cherish those moments. I cherish that responsibility. Sure. And so, to see them, like, go through something and not have the words to really explain, you know, the pain that they're feeling and things like that, it's just, and you don't know exactly what they're going through either. And you're just praying and asking God, like, what is it? Where where is the solution? Because I, I'm not losing my baby. Um, so yeah, it's it's been a lot, and I would just like you guys to keep him lifted and in prayer because we need it. Sure. Zion, ma'am. Any other prayer requests? Back the phone. So there's a couple. Um, 
there's an older couple that we've known for quite a few years and uh the the fellow i just just heard today he's he's in a home now uh has been for a couple of days and um the wife is not not in good shape his is more dementia related and she will probably end up in in some kind of a nursing home or something soon they're looking at having to do a pacemaker for her um but then she's got a whole host of other other things to deal with as well and then also their caregiver um just shared with me tonight or this afternoon late this afternoon that um uh she's also been given a diagnosis with the of cancer and so I tried to speak life into her as well and uh, had the opportunity to pray with her as well this afternoon. Um, so there's, there's that. And then there's also a younger couple that we've been working with and don't really know just, just what all's going on yet, but um, just prayers that, that God continues to cover them and, and that his will be done in their life as well. Cause there's, there's a lot of confusion right now. And, um, don't really know what's what the truth truth is yet so I have one too. Um, my uh stepdad he has um dementia and um he went to the neurologist yesterday and they said it's progressing and uh, they said he needs to start making arrangements to be in a nursing home um he, him and my mom got divorced a long time ago. He doesn't have any kids of his own. So just keep him um, uplifted in prayer. Amen. Amen. A lot going on. Jody's doing better. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, so my prayer request would just yeah, be continued healing and there's something going on with my insurance and um, I've been on the phone a lot with the medical supply place and the wound care center just to try to get every, they sent the order wrong and it's just been kind of a mess trying to get um, cause I didn't get sent enough to last 30 days. And it's just been kind of a mess trying to get, and then I called my insurance company and they said my home, any home medical supplies, which are wound care dressings, I have unlimited so I don't understand what the problem is. Oh, I don't know. Advocate, okay. Yeah. Definitely. But healing's got healings. It's so much better. The pain is kind of you know debridement's just very painful, and then for a couple of days after, it's pretty painful. Um, and so every t Tuesday at ten thirty. But I only have three left. Praise the Lord. It's way better than the last time this happened. I don't have to go for months. It's I got three more to go. So, yeah. <laughs> That's how I was counting down those chemotherapies. No joke. I literally was like, two more, one more. All right, now the weekly, 10 more, you know, and that's how I counted them down the same way. Yeah. My son said to me one day, he said, come on, mom, you just got to walk these down. And I was like, that's how we're gonna do it. That's how we're gonna do it. Amen. Any other prayer requests? Next Wednesday. Um, so I was supposed to get my chaplain badge tomorrow, and they had to reschedule it because they need command staff to be there. And the command staff was not gonna be there tomorrow because they have to know who their chaplains are. So it got shifted to Wednesday at 9 a.m. I found out on Sunday evening after our meeting of all the times I could have found out. And um, the people in my family who had already prepared to take Friday off now cannot get Wednesday off. So not very happy about that, but praise the Lord anyways. It's one of the things he's called me to. So um Trust in the Lord and doing what we need to do to get this done. Um, but lift up Tracy, uh, Pastor Tracy and her husband. Um, he will be installed as pastor this weekend at New Salem or Mount Salem. New Salem. 
Baptist church and we were going to try to go, but every possible thing that could have gotten in the way has. And so um, we're unable to make it, but as a church, I do want us to plan a time when we go down as a church or even as the gift team, because not all of you know her, um, and we go down and we assist her. Huh? I was just going to ask you about the like leaving happens still. Because I remember when you talked about the whole about obviously everyone happens with the leaving. Say it one more time. Yeah, so Speak up. you're saying Speak. um like obviously to leave on Friday, right? Like if you were gonna go to the mm -hmm. I was just I'll just and I was just gonna ask you about that. Yeah, we um we aren't gonna be able to go. Um, Terry and George aren't gonna go. Terry needs to be still and get healed. Now I need to be still and get healed. Um, for those who don't know, um, I had an accident at work yesterday that ended with three steri strips instead of stitches because stitches on the back of your ankle is just nothing nobody's asking for. I'm, I'm like, steri strip it, it's gonna be fine. And so I don't have an MD, but I begged for it. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> so um, one of the steri strips already fell off. So we got to fix this. But um, so <laughs> I um, am limping and it's painful to have shoes on. So that was going to be a sucky ride with my leg hanging down. But um, yeah, so we're not going to leave tomorrow we're going to um, go up a different day now. And um, they gave me antibiotics, they gave me a tetanus shot and they put an antibiotic cream on the steri strips. So um, just gonna keep praying over the no infection. Healing is gonna take place the way it's supposed to. It's not gonna look weird. So yeah, it's not real pretty I'll tell you. <laughs> So yeah, and the crazy part about it, guess who we forgot about in all of our planning? Tank. Where was Messiah gonna go? You know, Messiah can't take a, a <laughs> weekend away yet. Not allowed to take a weekend away. You know, the baby can't stay all night for multiple days with nobody, so yeah. So that was gonna be interesting. But yeah, well, sure yes, they're in Arkansas tonight, staying the night, and then they're heading the rest of the way. That's what another 10 hours, Arkansas, eight to 10. Yeah, so praying them in that she'll start her new journey. So, I do want to, I don't know, are we still, do I still need to use this? Okay. Um, a gentleman friend that was um, part of the homeless minute um, camps ha was found deceased and the family's pretty upset about it. So just pray healing and comfort and peace <laughs> over that. Amen. Sunday's his um, celebration of life at one o'clock. So thank you, Jesus. All right, so next week we will, um, next week we'll be going over the road to destruction, Damascus, the road of rebellion. When you think you've heard God, but it's really not God. Oh boy. So we're going to talk about that next week. Amen. <laughs> talk about vetting voices, amen. <laughs> Good stuff? Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Well, can I get somebody to pray us out tonight? Thank you. Do I need the... Father God, we just thank you and we praise you, God. We we thank you just for this day, God, and for um, allowing us to be together, God, and just learn and um, just be filled up by you, Father God. And I just send forth a hedge of protection, Father God, and healing over Zion, um, Jaleel's godson, Father God. We know that you have the final say, God. No matter what the doctors say, God, you have the final say. And I just plead the blood of Jesus over him, God, and healing, God. And I just ask that you give Jaleel and his mom 
just peace that surpasses everything, God. Just help them to find comfort in you, God. Whenever they're feeling anxious or afraid, God, just help to remind them, God, that they can always look to you for that peace and comfort that they need, Father God. I just ask that you are with Terry and George's friend, Father God. Um, I bind up any dementia, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God. And I just ask that any cancer, God, is removed in Jesus' name, Father God. Just send healing powers, God, over them in the name of Jesus, God. And I ask that you just send the knowledge, God, or, or whatever it takes to someone to find the cure for dementia, Father God. I just ask that that, that one day soon, Father God, will be cured. I just... um I send healing as well to my stepdad, God. And, and when he's um, at home at night alone, I just hope that you remind him that he is loved, God, yes. even if he can't remember God. I just ask that you comfort him, God, and you give him peace every single day, Father God. And I just ask that you continue to heal Jody, God, continue to yes. uplift her, Father God, so she can continue on her walk, God, and, and just grow and be the wonderful, beautiful person that she is, Father God. And I bind up any attacks of the enemy right now in Jesus' name. The enemy will not prosper. She will continue to just grow, God, and, and, and work in whatever ministry, God, that she is called to, Father God. And I thank you, God, for her and just for the person that she is, Father God. And I thank you for Apostle God. And as she takes this chaplain position, God, I just ask that you protect her, God, and you guide her each and every day, God. I command guardian angels surrounding her, Father God, and guardian angels at all watch posts surrounding her, God, as she is continuing to do your work, God, and, and walking in her calling, God, and I just ask healing over her ankle, God. Yes. I bind up right now any infection, Father God, or any further problems, God. I bind those up, and I just ask that you continue to heal her, Father God. And then I also just pray for P Pastor Tracy's husband, God, just continue to fill him up as well, God. Yes. And so he can lead the church, Father God, and continue to be there for Pastor Tracy so she can be there for her husband as well, God. And I just ask that you continue to fill them up, God, and allow them to work hand in hand, Father God, to minister to their church, Father God, and wherever else you've called them, God. And in any prayer requests, Father, that were unspoken, God, I just ask that you you just provide whatever it is that, that is needed, Father God. And we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.